Great. So it's two and two, huh? one hour and a half to go. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I am uh, Ciprian Mogra. Uh, my job is to help organization grow and succeed. I'm a business transformation advisor, and uh, I'm delighted today to have uh, some uh, fine guests. Uh, you wrote perhaps in the presentation of, uh, of uh, today that it will be a conversation with uh, a seasoned CEO, uh, an agility master, and uh, anti-fragility wizard. We will start with the CEO, with the master, and we hope that Sinana here will join us on the run. He has some some uh, health problem that appeared this morning. He's in the States. And we hope he will get well and he will join us uh, during the hour, hour and a half together. So uh, I have the pleasure to have uh, with us today uh, Bogdan Herja, CEO from uh, Pitek Plux and many other uh, other ventures, and Jerome Baron from uh, Grenoble called the Management, creator of Agile Profile, and one of the leader in uh, worldwide in related to organizational agility. Maybe you gentlemen would like to say something uh, about you, your background, and uh, how you get here. <laughs> Jerome, please. OK, thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. I am very pleased to be here. Uh, my background, I am, I am at the be beginning in my, of my life, uh, professional life. I used to be a specialist of strategy and organization. And uh, for 20 years, 21 years, I've been working on uh, agility field, first organizational approach, and now behavioral approach. Uh, that's why I developed this new tool that um, uh, Ciprian uh, talked about before, which is Agile Profile to measure the agility of people. And I help companies to transform uh, according to, to that uh, uh, point of view, behavioral approach. Okay. I am professor as well in uh, Grenoble Graduate School of Business, uh, and I have my own company at Giloa. Okay. And uh, on my end, uh, for uh, for those that uh, doesn't know me, I'm uh, uh, born uh, in in Romania in Bucharest. Spend a lot of hello. Uh So can you hear me? Yes, you're back. Yes. Yeah. So apparently the the platform crashed. Uh, so I uh, I spent a lot of uh, of time uh, in in uh, in France. I'm also uh, French by by adoption. Uh, my my background is uh, computer engineering. I uh, I I finished uh, an engineering school in in Lyon in in France, and since 2005 I um, came back to to Romania in Transylvania in Cluj-Napoca and I, I founded uh, PyTech Plus and uh, I uh, I joined other other ventures uh, with with other entrepreneurs. Uh, PyTech Plus it's uh, it's part since uh, since last year it's part of a of a larger group of companies called uh, WebHelp a French uh, uh, French uh, group of companies uh, specialized in in customer experience. And of course, uh, your uh, experience uh, in entrepreneurship and uh, the deep knowledge of Cluj and his uh, IT ecosystem is very important in our discussion today about agility, anti-fragility, or maybe luck. Uh, we, we, we were so happy to, to have you on this call to challenge that uh, maybe consultants and professors could, uh, could bring up <laughs> and to take us to, to the ground. We are very happy to be here with us. And Jerome, uh, we also add maybe to, to your experience that you build an international network, counting maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, 300 practitioners in your... We are close to 400. 400, sorry. So 400 people around the world, including Romania. So also a practitioner. So let's kick uh, kick off. And I would like to, to pay, if you want, a tribute to Sial here, who unfortunately cannot be with us, I hope, only for the start. Last year, he had an idea, and he gathered everybody that he could find on the internet that say that works on agility. 
and ask the following question. What is, in your perspective, the definition of organizational agility? What would you say? Bogdan, first. <laughs> uh, so I would say from, uh, from, from my perspective, and this is something that uh, I try to, to instill in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in our organization, in, in Partec Plus, uh, mostly because it's, it's, the, it's the company that I'm running uh, as a CEO, is the fact that the company is continually, continuously transforming. Uh, so you you need to continuously adapt to the um, to the environment um, and to uh, try to uh, create uh, value uh, that it's it's I would say it's, it's persistent. So to to uh, stay relevant even though the the, the market uh, uh, ecosystem it's uh, it's changing. Okay, uh, I agree with you. It's uh, maybe the first definition I could have. It is uh, the ability to move according to the context. But to do so, uh, you need to be connected to the context. That's why for me, agility is depending on uh, three pillars. Uh, the first one is anticipation. Uh, the second one, cooperation. And the last one, innovation. But we will discuss about it uh, you know, later. Uh, maybe a second um, definition could be um, having an organization that is able to satisfy all the stakeholders and not only uh, himself, herself. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm, we are being agile means we don't need to maximize our, our profits, uh, but to maximize the satisfaction of all the stakeholders clients, society, state, uh, customers, of course, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. OK. So um, summarizing what uh, Jérôme just said, uh, it's something like uh, anticipation, looking in front, answering with innovation, and delivering together in, in cooperation. And related to turbulence, that uh, because we, we, we reach now perhaps to the next uh, question, why do we need it? It's fancy to talk about agility these days, especially in IT. And why? Why do we need it in your sense? Uh, I would say because uh, we are uh, in, a, in a moving uh, world. So uh, you need agility because um, it's very difficult to predict uh, even though it's part of uh, what Jerome said, it's very difficult to predict uh, what what the future will uh, will bring us uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, I, I think no one was uh, seeing uh, one year ago uh, what is happening right now globally with the with the pandemics. Uh, I think no one is sure of uh, how next year will unfold. Uh, in, in front of us, it will be a, a, a good year or a better year than, than this year or a, or a, or a year that with, with even more challenges. Uh, and uh, I would say it's, it's uh, if, if you want to have a successful organization and to, to cope with uh, what you explained to, to maximize the satisfaction of uh, all the stakeholders, you need to um, adapt continuously to your stakeholders, to the environment, to, to the, the things that will, will, uh, will come uh, in, in the future. And you have, you have these ups and downs, and you need to embrace the ups and downs, I would say, in, in, in the ecosystem and in the economy. You, you, we will never have, I think, in, in maybe in couple of hundreds of years uh, in the future, we will never have an economy that will uh, be steady or will uh, will move only in one direction. It, it, it always goes ups and downs. Uh, and you need to, to be prepared and to adapt to, to these ups and downs. OK, it's a, it's a really good reason. Uh, but uh, what is interesting to, to, to study, to analyze, is why is it like that today? 
because 30 years ago, uh, I remember during my PhD, I asked uh, 600 companies about uh, uh, forecasting and prediction, and 97% uh, of these companies, small, big, and very small companies, said that they are using tools to, to predict, uh, tools to uh, anticipate, tools to, uh, to make a plan, and a five years plan, and prediction to uh, five years predictions as well. And uh, the, the most uh, <coughs> funny thing is that uh, it was efficient. It may, I mean that uh, the, the predictions were realized five years after. Why today is it, is it is not possible? That's the right question. And to me, the, 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 the answer to that question is that we are changing the paradigm. Uh, until um, before uh, 1895, I mean before internet, uh, we lived in a society that we called industrial society, and that society were based on three pillars. The first one uh, was uh, verticality. We lived, we used to live in vertical organization with a chief, a chief under chief, a chief under chief under chief, etc. And uh, and the people inside that company need to obey. If you don't obey, you are not a good worker. Uh, and as the same uh, at school, if you don't obey, you are not a good student. <laughs> and the same at home, if you don't obey to your father and mother, you are not a good children. Okay? And uh, it was like that, verticality. And uh, besides that, we had uh, uh, another pillar, which was uh, materialism. Uh, I was born in the middle of the 30 glorious years and my parents told me work a lot and you will be rich and you can and you will pay you everything you want okay uh, we we were focused on consumption and possessing a lot of things okay uh, and the last point was infinity i mean by infinity that uh, we were educated in um, in a way which was maximization, maximization of profits, my maximization of incomes, maximization of products that we can buy. And uh, because we were living in an infinite world with many, many resources, with no pro problem with uh, clients because we, we had very strong growth uh, and uh, it was very, uh, a, a very specific paradigm. But today, this paradigm is finished. We are entering in a new paradigm uh, based not on verticality, but horizontality because of internet. Because before internet, the, the communication was vertical from the chief to the others. Now with internet, it's uh, everybody to everybody. It's quite, a, quite different, okay? Uh, we are not based on materialism. The young people, the the new generations, I don't know how to call them because the letter changes uh, every year. Uh, but uh, the new generation, they are waiting for, for uh, meaning, they are waiting for values. They, are, uh, they need to, to do something for the society. And uh, they don't want to consume and to have uh, as much products as possible at home. Uh, so it's not anymore materialism. It's a humanism, something like that. And the last one, we discovered that we live in a finite world. And that we cannot uh, produce as much as we want. And richness is not possible for everybody. So the, the, the paradigm is different. The game is different. We are now in a, a zero-sum game. And it's quite different. We need to share. We need to optimize, but not anymore to maximize. That's the main reason for me, the change of paradigm. I'm listening to you, uh, Jerome, and uh, I found many common points uh, that are experiencing Cluj in, our, in some IT companies. Even if, if uh, for example, even we are hiring millennials in many IT companies, 
many of them, uh, well, at least it's my perception, I'm not a millennial, would love to have uh, a long shot uh, in terms of, of uh, career in one company. Perhaps Bogdan have, uh, have another perspective, but please comment. <laughs> Yeah, I would say uh, even from from this perspective, we need somehow to to adapt. Uh, the things are not uh, are not linear anymore. So I would say that we need to adapt not to to a population as we were doing uh, fifteen years ago or ten years ago. We need to adapt to each each individual, which is which is quite quite tough. I I would say um of course you need you 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 have people that uh, need uh, more than than a salary today so even though the the the, the ecosystem uh, today in Cluj Napoca it's it's somehow uh, um it's 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 a bubble in a bubble so with Cluj in itself it's a, it's a bubble if you're looking at, uh, at the society as a whole in in, in Romania and the IT sector in in Cluj it's a bubble in itself. Uh, if you're comparing the the average salaries uh, in in Romania and and in, in in the IT industry, I would say that we have uh, we have a factor of maybe four to six uh, x difference between the average salary in IT and the average salary in in, in Romania in general. Uh, which is quite quite high, I, I, I would say, uh, and uh, with with uh, with this uh, mm, uh, hierarchical uh, organization, as you you were explaining, Jerome, to a to a more network uh, ish organization, uh, and to the fact that people uh, need, need they they need more than than. A salary they need purpose it's it's uh, it's quite difficult to to do it i mean you need to cope with a lot of with much more challenges than 10 15 years ago it it on on a on the bright side i i would say uh it brings more initiative uh which is good it brings uh and also it's something that it's uh uh consistent with with our um uh, background historical background in in romania as a communist country uh it brings us some sort of uh, balance between uh between between uh, men and women in in organizations so i saw that uh, we had a panel earlier in in the uh, in the event about the the, the role of the women in, in in the industry uh and and it's good. I mean, this is the this is the bright side. I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to uh, manage an organization which uh, all the people in the in the organization are executing what we are thinking uh, top down. Uh, looks like, based on what Bogdan said, that uh, in our days uh, we are bits and pieces from different eras that uh, Jerome just mentions maybe bits and pieces of of um, the era uh, the friends say the 30 years the glorious years it was until until the 80s when we have some behaviors that we encounter very vertical very centralized very top down and also an expectation maybe from some people to stay longer in a the company then you have the next uh, part after the oil crisis when, when it was the beginning of a competitive life in an organization and elements of uh, unpredictability and the volatility and certainty that Bogdan mentioned also in his, uh, his speech. Um, could be also a definition of agility. Jerome, I remember you have a wonderful joke to define behavioral agility, to go now to people agility. Do, can you say it shortly? <laughs> I, I, I... I don't remember. Can you say it? Maybe because I, 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 I don't. I, I don't see what you what you are waiting for. <laughs> the two, maybe later the two friends that hire to the to similar companies. <laughs> ah, do uh, oh, I don't remember. Uh, no, I don't remember. Can you can you tell it? I will save it for later. No problem about. It. Maybe it's a moment to ask, uh, to say to the public that it's an open conversation. Every question is welcome, so feel free to use the chat. 
Uh, I don't know how to invite you if you want to share the camera, but maybe I, I will be uh, helped by, by the production team. But if somebody from audience want to ask questions, please type them on, on, on a chat on, on your right uh, uh, right screen. Uh, maybe maybe what, what if uh, if uh, I can I would like to add an, an, another definition of agility because we have the elements to understand it now. Uh, I explained that there was a past society uh, based on hierarchy, uh, and I called that a regulated society, uh, a society uh, uh, in which organizations are living uh, um, uh, according to rules. And that's why I call it regulated with process, with uh, procedures, uh, very, and we need to obey to these procedures. This is a regulated world. And what Bogdan described, and it's very uh, right, uh, is that we need to adapt today. We are living in an adaptive world, okay? And this is the new paradigm, regulated uh, for the last paradigm and adaptative for the new paradigm. But the reality is that today we are in the middle. We are between these two paradigms. And these two paradigms are living together. And to me, agility is not to be adaptive. To me, agility means to be able to act in a regulated way if we are in front of a really regulative situation. And we need to act with an adaptive way if we are in front of an adaptive situation. This is agility, this ability to move from regulated to adaptive way of action, and sometimes to, to, to share, to play with both uh, attitudes. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, today we have a specific situation right now. We have rules, we, we need to begin at two, we need to respect uh, the speech of, uh, of each other, we need, there are some rules, but it is very adaptive as well because we didn't prepare exactly questions before. We, 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 lo we love to improvise. We will answer the questions. So we are using the both way. We are using regulated and adaptive ways in the same time and probably a bit more adaptive than regulated. And after that meeting, I will have another meeting with someone and with him, I would like, um, probably I would need to work with a more regulated way because he's like that and the problem we have to solve is more regulated than adaptive. So this is a real agility, the ability to move between reg regulated and adaptive way, uh, way, ways of actions and uh, the ability to understand the context and what is the percentage of regulated and the percentage of adaptive needs and to choose the right answer to answer that con specific context. Very insightful. That's it, why I measure people and I yes. measure your ability to live in a regulated or an adaptive way. Yes, <laughs> it is your, your uh, framework. Yes. <laughs> Maybe it's a moment to talk about it or we save it for later. <laughs> Uh, I, I, as you want, may, I would like to listen to Bogdan. What is your reaction when I say that? Because we discussed before, but not on that point specifically. <laughs> so it's kind of uh, what's happening with uh, with with us today, uh, and it's it's uh, quite. Uh, I would say it's quite. Uh, a struggle for the organization, but in, in a good way. I think it's it's uh, this this kind of uh, good stress for the organization. It it uh, helps us to to move forward. So, it, of course, we 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 have different kind of clients. We we have different kind of clients. So more are in in this uh, space are more regulated. More are uh, in in this uh, more adaptive uh, way. We can see that uh, it's 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 uh, kind of difficult for people that uh, are at the beginning of their career to make this switch. 
okay, to, to pass from a, a very regulated with uh, a very strict uh, kind of, of project to a more uh, adaptive uh, project, I, uh, I would say. But it's it's uh, it's something that uh, brings uh, brings experience to, uh, to to the teams. I mean, if you're working on the same project uh, in the same way for ten years, you definitely not have the same experience as a team that moved to uh, between uh, regulated and uh, adaptive projects uh, every every year. So uh, that that's for sure. I think it's something that. Uh, that brings uh, brings also uh, what I'm calling mental flexibility or uh, or fuzzy thinking, uh, where you need to you need to cope with uh, fragment of information. You need to you need to take uh, what's in front of you and try to try to extract as much as as possible uh, out of a context and take. Take a decision. I mean, in the end, it, it, it boils down to, to that every time. You need to take decisions in in a in a context that can be very very open, very uh, very unclear. And uh, sometimes you you need to take uh, take decisions, and it's it's a little bit more easier when you have something that it's 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 a little bit more um, more more fixed. I would say. So now we can answer the, the, the what, uh, Ciprian, because with what Bogdan say, said, we, we, we can imagine that the, the key point for someone or for an organization is to be able to stay connected to the context. Because you can adapt only, uh, adaptation is adaptation to something or with something, and you need to catch it to be, to be able to adapt. That's why uh, I focused on anticipation, cooperation, and innovation. And uh, maybe I could say the, my definition of anticipation, cooperation, and innovation, of, of course. Uh, yesterday, in the previous uh, paradigm, anticipation was only planning. I mean, make, making a study and then plan what to do. OK? Uh, and today, because the world is changing, as Bogdan, Bogdan said, um, we, we need to, to make risk analysis to, to try to probabilize what could happen, what will change, and how it will change my way, my plan. Okay, But this is not enough. This is not enough because, uh, first of all, it's too difficult to anticipate all, all the risks. That's impossible because anything is changing all the time. So you cannot play and try to make the probabilities on, on all the subjects or all the elements that are around you. That's impossible. So I discovered that in the future, there is one thing that we know. And we know it. Uh, probably with uh, uh, between 90 and 100% of uh, efficiency. This is the consequences of our decision and actions. I don't know what will happen around me, but I know when I say or when I do something, what are the effects of my decisions? I know it, especially if I know the people around me. Okay, this is the anticipation that we need today. Not only planning, not only risk analysis, but analysis of the consequences of our decisions. And this is the beginning of what Rick Dove, uh, who wrote the first book on agility, uh, uh, and the title of his book is fantastic because the, the title was Response Ability. The ability to response. But when you say it quickly, it means responsibility, the responsibility. And this is, for me, responsibility. The basis of responsibility is to be uh, able to understand the consequences of your actions and decisions. OK? So if you are in a regulated way, you are doing anticipation by planning. Maybe when you begin to enter the, the adaptive way, you are beginning to make risk analysis. 
but when you are deeply in the new paradigm, you need to, to be able to anticipate the consequences. Three parts of uh, anticipation. Planification, risk analysis, consequence uh, uh, analysis. Is that, is that clear for anticipation? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Cooperation, we have the same. Cooperation yesterday in the previous paradigm. What was uh, cooperation? Only coordination. Okay, I mean, uh, you, you, uh, if uh, Bogdan, uh, when I, I will know, I would know when Bogdan will finish his task, and I have to begin just after. It was the organization inside the comment dit les usines um, factories, uh, factories inside factories. Okay, only coordination. I don't care about Bogdan and you, but I am coordinated with you to begin at two. That was the key point of cooperation yesterday. After that, we created win-win relationships. And I show my hands in the same time, win-win relationships. I don't care about you, Bogdan and Cyprian, but I know that if we are working together, we will win more money. Yeah. But sure. I, don't care. I don't care about you. But today, today it's quite different. Now we need to care. We need to care about all the stakeholders. And to do so, I need to know you, Bogdan. I need to know you, Chipran. I need to know what are your goals, what are your, your values, uh, what are your needs. I need to create a real relationship between us. Three parts of cooperation, coordination, win-win relationship and satisfy, satisfy relationship. Sharing the same meaning. It's a large uh, definition of cooperation with a regulated part, coordination, and uh, an adaptive part, which is satisfy, satisfying relationship. Okay? And we have the same with innovation. Yesterday, what was innovation? Just improve. Don't change the process because it's uh, if you do so, you break uh, les économies d'échelle, the scale economy of, scale. E economy of scales. It's stupid. It, it was in a maximum in maximum world in a maximization. It's totally stupid to break it. And after that, uh, especially Michael Porter said, "Oh no, we need to make a differentiation." I mean, I need, we need to change everything, but it's not good. The right way is what Bogdan said, changing just what is needed by your context. And this have a very nice name, <laughs> changing only what is needed. Yes. Okay. What is needed when is needed. Exactly. Uh, we have already some question. I would love to pick some of them. We will answer to all of them, but I'll start with something, let's say, slower. How can agility be adapted in a heavily regulated environment? It's not possible. For a company, the number of approvals or regulation are sometimes limitative and executive switches to new products or markets. How will can be settled with regulators? For example, during the pandemics. So the answer is no. <laughs> yeah. If your context is regulated, if all the stakeholders are working with a regulated way, if the needs are regulated, the right answer is regulated. That's all. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, for example, if you work in a um, nuclear energy factory, do you imagine we can work with uh, only adaptive uh, adapt adaptation? It's not <laughs> possible. You need you need it's absolutely necessary to follow the regulated uh, rules. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. I have an example from my experience, and uh, I will tell later if it's from Cluj or not. Uh, a company I work with uh, is in pharmaceutical, and it's like nuclear industry <laughs> you cannot mess it's very yeah. regulated environment 
And when we reflect about uh, agility, we say, okay, we won't touch the inside, you know, the production. Production is sacrosanct and it's extremely regulated. There are quality procedures that are madness. We try to be agile outside that everything is production. For example, innovation and marketing. And uh, I, I work with the extremely regulated uh, department, which is, was about uh, standards and uh, regulation with the Ministry of Health. Actually, they start to find where it's innovation possible based on research. And they found new markets only by researching. So I have an example of something that comes from a regulated market, extremely regulated, but brought some, some innovation. It's not wild agility, but it's an element of innovation according to your, your, um, your definition. So it was a small improvement, one shot of, of innovation, but who brought some oxygen bubble for, for yeah. marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Good example, yes. Yeah. Uh, perhaps, perhaps the environment of IT uh, that Bogdan knows uh, very well uh, offer more and more, more example of non-regulated. Any, 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 any worse story from the adaptative <laughs> An adaptation on IT. Yeah, I mean, uh, as as a, an ecosystem, I think we we got infused uh, by a lot of projects that were uh, startup related projects. As a, as a company, we worked in the last uh, 12, 13 years with a lot of startups, uh, and I think in in the ecosystem today, a lot of companies in the ecosystem are working uh, developing product for. Uh, for startups, so most of the time the startups are uh, in in a, a, a operating in a, in an adaptive uh, ecosystem, uh, trying to disrupt the ecosystem most of most of the time, not doing uh, incremental innovation but the disruptive innovation. Is not always the 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 the, uh, the, the, the fact, but. I would say uh, it's something that helped us to uh, to to prepare for uh, for this more adaptive uh, world, okay? And have uh, at our turn uh, to have a, uh, an, an ecosystem of startups that developed uh, in uh, in in our uh, in our country and in our city. Uh, when we we I met, can, maybe I can add something. I suppose Bogdan that you use Scrum methods. For uh, the, some of the projects, okay. yes. And yes. Scrum is an agile method, okay? But yes. Scrum is as as much regulated than adaptative. Uh, yes. Because it's an adaptative way, because the, the, the client yes. is always there uh, through the product owner. You have a meeting uh, uh, every day, uh, for example, to adapt everybody. But in Scrum, there are very, very, very strong rules as well. And you need to respect them to have a good team, a Scrum team. Yeah. And this is a, a, a very good example of mix between regulated and adaptive way of action. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm still inspired by the question related to heavily regulated environment to reflect of uh, our governments. We have France, we have Romania, and their reaction to uh, the pandemics could be a nice example of moving from heavy regulated to something more than regulated and a bit agile, or not? What is your perspective? <laughs> I can speak for France only. Only for France, okay. Yeah. You, you can you can you can speak for almost all Europe. <laughs> uh, no, in France it's specific because we have a very centralized country, and uh, our government is uh, is not really able to 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 decide regulated actions and to leave to give the freedom to the uh, local uh, politicians to decide to follow them or not to follow them 80% or 100% etc it's not we are not able to do to play so in france <laughs> for example in romania we move from from very centralized and very very 
autocratic way of handling pandemics to a beginning of decentralization. Actually, uh, local authorities are supposed to take responsibility and decide if they take measures locally or not. It is a huge challenge in terms of agility because uh, this kind of organization are used to obey, to quote, uh, quote Jerome. And very few and only some, some departments are taking real responsibility to move on and act. We can see that this kind of uh, behavior as an as a increase of agility and maybe acting in less regulated way. Maybe not adaptive, but maybe less regulated. Any comments from that? For example, uh, I'm in Bucharest right now, even I from Cluj, I'm in Bucharest, and it's supposed that my, my around this mall, my sector will be closed because of the race of the cases and other not, just to give you an idea. Like in Paris, having uh, uptown Paris closed and 16e arrondissement open, you know. Any comments related to this way of acting of, of authorities in Romania and in France? I don't know. I think it. Uh, I mean, in my. Please, Bogdan. Yes, please, Jerome. Uh, I would say uh, to to be uh, agile in in this kind of uh, situation, you need to be really, really connected to what's uh, what's happening. So today, I would say local and and central authorities they are taking decisions based on on. Uh, on data that are not uh, the, the real the real data so this is the big problem that we we have today uh we don't we we weren't prepared to to fight this kind of uh, conditions i mean to really have the, the to take the, the the good decision we would mm, rely more on on have the data i mean few countries have real data and, and are taking decisions good decisions they taken based on 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 real data and we 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 are we are seeing people that are not at all prepared to this kind of uh, conditions to adapt very quickly to something that is changing from one day to another or one week to to, to another we are still applying the same the same decisions that uh, we took uh, six months ago uh, based on the same assumptions i mean we are not looking uh, correctly at the, at, the, at, the, at the data and we, we don't really have the the correct data uh, i totally today. agree with you bogdan it's uh, we have a lack of data and uh, uh, i think the 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 right way to answer uh, would have been to have changed our education way. Because uh, what I can observe in France is the inability of people to be, to be agile, to act with agility. Uh, they, those who refuse to, to, to wear a mask, for example, for me, they, are, they have a very, very great lack of agility. They are not able to anticipate the consequences of, the, of that action. Uh, they are not uh, living with uh, the other. They are not looking for the satisfaction of the other. Uh, they are looking only for their own satisfaction. And they don't want to change. They are not mobile. They are not ready to move. They don't want to change their habit. It's totally uh, unagile. And I think that if we had developed that three abilities in our education systems, it would be very easy to manage such a crisis. But we can't trust people. We can't say to people, oh, you are free, decide as you, uh, you uh, here is the meaning. We need to protect the, the weak people in our country. But now I said that this is the meaning and you know how to do it. But because we didn't educate people like that, we cannot manage it like, manage it so. The key difficult is behavior again. How we can train behavior, how we can educate behavior. Mm. You still have time, gentlemen. <laughs> what is your experience uh, related to this? 
the behavior related to adaptive adaptive change? Uh, I I I I was thinking about it very frequently. I have only two solutions. The first one, education of people of uh, children. Uh, I dream uh, of uh, uh, agility courses at school, but for the youngest. Uh, um, uh, just before the meeting of today, uh, I was on LinkedIn and there was a video of uh, children in Japan learning and they were between three and five years old and they were learning how to act in a bus with old people, with disabled people, etc., etc., leaving the place for those people. Why don't we educate the children at three, four, five years old uh, how to anticipate the consequences of their action, how to try to satisfy people around there, and how to move? It's, it's not so difficult. So this is the first answer, answer, education. And the second one is for us, for people who are adult, who has, have not been educated like that, uh, I, the only way I found was training and coaching based on my tool. Because as long as you don't show them their way of action with a tool, they don't, need, they don't want to change. They can understand what you say, but if they don't see their own results, they don't change. And uh, I would add on top of that for um, for for both uh, kids and and adults, it's uh, if we are more exposed to other other culture, I think this is this is something ability of of people. I so travel travel as as much as you yes, can. I think you are a very good example, Bogdan, because you have two and a half cultures. You are Romanian, you are French, and you know English as well. And, and probably you traveled a lot. And uh, all the, the children of my friends who, are, who have the double culture, uh, I have friends who are English and uh, the mother is English, the father is French. Another co uh, um, other friends, uh, the mother is American, the father is uh, French, but with uh, uh, Armenian origins. The children, they are terrific. That they, they have such an ability to move, absolutely crazy, because of that mix of cultures. Yes, I, I agree with you. It's a very good, very good idea. Uh, well done. I hope you can hear us, right? Because, uh, yeah, good, because we can't yeah. see you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you, oh, you, you cannot see me. Or no. I can see you. Yeah, okay, maybe it's my connection in this case. Hello again. <laughs> so we talk about education and we start with children. Uh, well, how about the grown-ups? The grown-ups who are flooding our organizations to come back to, to business. How we can train employees uh, to make the company agile? Uh, I would say it's not only uh, books and, and, and trainings, uh, it's also uh, the way to uh, apply this, uh, these things. I mean, uh, it, it's very good to, to read and it's very good to go to workshops and have trainings and, and, and mentors and stuff like this, but if you uh, don't have the possibility to uh, uh, apply what you, what you read or what you applied you know in a workshop in a in a real life project and and that when i'm saying a real life project it's something that you can uh, really start from from scratch and uh, push it to 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 the the end of life of uh, of this of this project it's very difficult to 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 have people this is one of the one of the problems uh, that uh, we still have i think in in, in Romania in, in our ecosystem. There are projects that are coming to Romania and, and the teams are trained based on the projects that we, we, we managed to, to bring here in Romania. 
but uh, we still lack of uh, big complex uh, projects where we can we can train and learn and and try to uh, adapt ourselves to to this new uh, to these new challenges so it's it's uh, it's it's getting better i think but uh, this is one of the points uh, key points that we should look at uh, for 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 the local uh, local i i i have a, a training process when i work with companies uh, the first step is to understand the why i spend a long time to explain why changing to to the people the second step is uh, uh, defining agility defining the drivers uh, the levers to, to become agile. Uh, the third step is uh, discussing and sharing experiences. The fourth one uh, is practicing outside uh, the, the reality through serious games and sharing about uh, our attitudes and behavior during that, uh, that exercises. And then practice under my supervision and then practice alone and share your experiences it's very uh, and i do that uh, during two three four five months depending on the companies and people and uh, my my goal is that they continue to practice and they continue to share their experiences by themselves without me to become autonomous um there is a question here. Maybe we take some questions because it start, start yeah. to have a pile. Uh, maybe it's a question that have behind another question. I will let's see it. Is it enough for organization to have agile leaders? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think it's it's one of the one of the aspects I would say. So without having uh, leaders that are uh, agile it's it's quite difficult to to have an uh, agile organization but uh, it it's not sufficient i would say it's you you need you need more than that um, and that's why we we need to try to uh, satisfy all the stakeholders i mean uh, you you don't need only uh the, the leaders in the organization you need the, your your clients to be agile and uh, and you need your your internal uh, teams to be to be prepared for uh for that uh it's it's um i mean we we had some sort of uh quite uh, we were we were quite uh, lucky i would say uh related to that because we uh, in these 15 years we kind of uh played with a lot of types of uh, clients from very big to very small from regulated to completely unregulated uh, clients in different different geographies different uh, kind of uh, of sectors so yeah this this brings us uh, as an organization some sort of uh, richness i uh, i i would say yes I, I agree with you it's a necessary condition but it's not enough as we say in French, maybe uh, Cyprian, you can help me to translate that. On ne balaye pas un escalier par le bas. Um, we do not brush a stair starting from the bottom, from the first yes. step. <laughs> we, we, we always begin by the top. So it's a very necessary condition, but yes. it's not. <laughs> <enough>. <laughs> I translate to Romania to be safe. Yeah. <laughs> A good point. Good point. Uh, let's say some other question, or shall we take from our points? How do you feel? What do you want to improvise about? <laughs> no questions. It's good. Unregulated. Unregulated. Uh, somebody want to ask more about perhaps anticipation. Which few activities are the companies planning to develop, and uh, what are the things they have to let go in this unpredictable environment? Uh, can uh, I need to read it? Which question is it? Uh, I think if you look for Alina, Alina, on a chat. Ah, uh, Alina, which yeah. new activities are the companies planning to develop, and what are the things that they have to let go 
in this unpredictable environment? I don't know. <laughs> Bogdan, please answer. I, 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 I need to think about it. Maybe there is something, uh, a way to find out, but to let go. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think it's uh, it's a it's a question that we, we, which is very difficult to answer because it's uh, it's related to each uh, each organization in each company. I mean, you 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 cannot have a, a, a silver bullet uh, answer for uh, for this question. Uh, I would say from uh, if we're, if you are looking from the uh, environment point of view and the fact that the environment is completely un unpredictable um, yeah you 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 need some sort of of uh, you you cannot you cannot as an organization uh, and and as a as a organization that has a certain size to um, to try to act with uh, completely no plan, so uh, this this is this is something that g puts a lot of stress on on the on the organization itself and uh, and on the people in the organization. And if you don't have a, a plan that afterwards you can adapt, uh, you will kill your people. You will overburn your uh, your people. That that's for sure. There are some some activities that you can uh, somehow. Uh, let go, uh, but I don't have uh, uh, examples now. Top of my head, I don't really have examples uh, on on what we should let go in this uh, unpredictable uh, way of uh, working or, or or global globalized uh, market where it, to decline. And uh, maybe tomorrow it's it's not here anymore because I don't know they they uh, they didn't raise money uh, fast enough and they're dead because they are running out of cash. Um, it's it's yeah it's it's quite a tough question. We maybe we should take some time to think about the the question and and come back to to that uh, in in maybe during the maybe we can take the example of a startup. A startup is living in a totally unpredictable environment, usually. And uh, uh, in France, we have a statistic which is very interesting. 70% of the startups that uh, have a success, that have a success, they have a success on a product that they didn't imagine at the beginning. Okay? So, uh, uh, the only way for them to have a success is not to plan, but to be connected and to listen to the customers, to the, the partners, uh, to, to the stakeholders, and to have that ability to move all the time depending on the context. That's all. Maybe it's, uh, it could be an answer to that question. Be prepared yes. not to be stick to the, to the plan. And maybe as yeah. somebody writes, maybe uh, get rid, get lost uh, all the control ideas or over controlling ideas could be, could be something. Um, shall we take one more? Um, we live a different world that is a developed world that is aging. Say somebody in in a chat. Look at the ever age, uh, average age of the workforce. How will be able to create a more agile culture? with an increasingly older population, which is rather conservative, valuing less change and more stability. Now, we move back to the society from the business, but let's do it. <laughs> I think, uh, in my opinion, maybe I'm a little bit idealist, but uh, I think we can train people, we can educate people at uh, any age. We don't have a limit of uh, it's, it. We just need to focus on on that and and do it. And there are, there are many ways to to train and educate population, uh, uh, depending on various uh, cultural backgrounds and uh, a lot of other factors. I, I would say, 
But I, I'm, I'm not uh, so pessimistic. Uh, if we want to educate or train a population, that, that the, the age doesn't really matter. I mean, look at what's happening right now with the, with the tools that we have with the mobile phones. I mean, uh, mobile phone is a very good example. It's, it's adopted by uh, all, the, all the people. I mean, uh, no matter the, the age that, uh, that uh, the users have and, and they are using the, the same tools as the... the yes, I agree kids. with you, but uh, I think that uh, education, educating people uh, could be based on training, as we said before, but we need to have a strong communication inside the, the company and we need to change the um, uh, assessment criteria, uh, of course, because uh, if you don't change all that uh, in the same time, uh, they, people would not change. Uh, they are focused on their ass assessment criteria and uh, this is a very, very, very key point. Another point is that it's not necessary inside the company to, to, to develop agility uh, for everybody. Uh, you could imagine an organization in which some jobs are more regulated and for the people that are not able to have such an agility. And you can have some jobs that are very, very adaptive for the people who are not able to follow rules and uh, to live in a regulated way. And you have some jobs that are very agile because they need people who are able to manage a regulated and adaptive way in the same time. So uh, it's not obliged to, to transform everybody inside the company. Okay. Uh, I was typing a question in a in a chat box. I just want to play with uh, the participants. Uh, please type uh, in a chat. Jerome offer us, uh, with the help of Bogdan, a very simple definition of agility. It's anticipation, innovation, cooperation. Ability to look ahead, anticipation, innovation, finding a solution, working collaboration to adapt. If you want to uh, type in a chat, where do you see uh, the challenge for your organization today? It's in anticipation, in cooperation, or innovation. And while we type, maybe we take uh, we take uh, some other question. Uh, for example, I would like to talk about uh, the ecosystem inclusion. Uh, and uh, I remember Bogdan when uh, we have our first call, we we talk uh, with details about the different ages and the type of organization that you experience during your present as entrepreneur in Cluj. Do, can you remember briefly what you were talking about? You know, with the ages and uh, degree of success and so on. You remember that, right? The, the, the way that uh, the ecosystem is it's moving right now, uh, do, you, do you refer to, to that? The, 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 kind of, uh, the kind of companies that we are seeing uh, appearing right now in the, in the market? You say about uh, the company who start right after the communist fall, and then uh, it was another wave of company and another wave of company, and each one had a different degree of success. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, yeah, I, I remember the, the conversation. I think uh, right now uh, we, we have some sort of, uh, of a challenge uh, ahead of us, so we, we somehow managed after the 90s in, in, in uh, starting 2000 to create companies and value in, in, in Romania in general and uh, in, in, uh, in Cluj in particular. I would say we had a, a new breed of entrepreneurs that started to, to develop companies uh, in this period of time. Um, and we have a challenge uh, right now uh, in front of us because this need to, needs to continue. So some of us, uh, as I, I, I do, we are starting to uh, exit uh, from, from our uh, actual companies. Uh, we need to prepare for the next, uh, next generation of, uh, of entrepreneurs. What I'm seeing right now is that um, Maybe it's only a perception. It's and I'm only subjective. I would say, but um, I didn't saw a lot of uh, big companies that were created in the last five 
uh, 10 years. There, there, there were some examples, but there, there, there's, there, there's a lot of small companies that were created. So uh, even uh, if I'm looking at the former colleagues that uh, uh, left, uh, left our company and created their, their own business, uh, these companies are mm, much more numerous, I, I would say, but much more exposed. So with, uh, with the pandemics, uh, what we are seeing is in, in inclusion of OCA this, we are seeing that uh, the companies that are uh, suffering the most are small companies, uh, mono-client companies uh, that, uh, that really get the heart in, uh, with, uh, with, the, with the crisis uh, this year. And this is, this is a challenge uh, for, uh, for the local ecosystem because we, we had managed to, um, to build something that was quite resilient, I would say, in the, in the last 20 years. The, the local ecosystem grew some, somehow uh, very uh, with, with, uh, with, uh, with some sort of anti-fragile uh, construction. So we were we 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 passed the the, the last crisis with no uh, no problem whatsoever. Uh, this is uh, this is a good example of how the ecosystem will uh, will uh, will, will uh, get the, the the hit right now with uh, with what's happening uh, right now because we we still have uh, the the big companies that were created in. Uh, in uh, the beginning of the 2000, uh, and we have this uh, this uh, ecosystem of, of smaller companies. We're very interested in what will happen end of this year, beginning of uh, of next year. Could be this uh, a matter of uh, need of agility in your hands? I mean. I, I I I think you you need uh, you need the, all the, the 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 three ingredients that you've put in in the title of uh, of the workshop. So uh, you need to be agile. You need to be uh, anti fragile, and from time to time you need some some luck. I mean, even though I I personally don't think uh, luck really exists. It's it's just hard work. Um, you, I mean, sometime, sometime you 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 really need to 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 think uh, not, even not out of the box. I mean, you need to really uh, get your head around what's happening uh, and and try to uh, somehow predict the unpredictable in order to to to. To be resilient and 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 try to to have a company that it's, it's it will be here in five ten uh, twenty years. Uh, speaking about anti fragility or the ability to grow from disorder and to increase your power being hit, this is a definition of of Nassim Taleb of uh, anti fragility. Uh, we discover talking with you, Bogdan, maybe a possible fragile. Uh, side of um, our IT ecosystem in Cluj. It is related uh, to maybe different of expect difference of expectation and vision between people who are leading organization or are selling for IT companies and the people working in this one. Uh, it's a difference and the and the, and is a competition about prices. Can we explore this part? Perhaps are you okay? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean uh, the, uh, the the local ecosystem. It's a, it's a, 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 as I was saying, we are we are living in a in a bubble right now. So I don't think we we have a lot of people that understand what's happening. It's maybe the first time in in our recent history that we are seeing uh, people in the industry uh, that are uh, looking at the, looking in the future and. Uh, try to somehow uh, act as uh, nothing happened. So uh, this is this is quite uh, 
This is quite a paradox, I, I would say. And on the other hand, for the first time, eh, we have also people and a lot of companies that uh, uh, are really uh, laying off people. So it's it's and, and and people that are understand what a crisis means. I mean, being laid off, it's it's not something very very easy to to live. Uh, and, and and not uh, finding a, a, a new place in in, in this uh, in this context in in the in the in the market. This is something that it's very new for uh, for for our local here in, in in Romania. And 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 I think my my opinion on to that is that uh, it's something uh, somehow uh, relevant because if a, if a market or uh, the, it, it's not going uh, through these ups and downs it's not a mature market so in in france i lived in france and i i i spent uh, between 93 to 2005 so i lived in france with the dot com uh, bubble and the and the burst of the of the bubble uh, we were just getting out of, of a crisis uh, before that. So the, the French economy, the French market, it's used to these ups and downs. Uh, the Romanian uh, ecosystem, it's not, uh, it's not used to, to that. This is maybe the first time that it's, we will see a contraction of, of the market. Okay. And uh, any ideas about what to do? Now we miss uh, Sial here, who, who is a wizard of anti-fragility, but perhaps I hope he will see us, or if he won't see us. <laughs> the the anti, anti fragility is it's a concept that can be applied to uh, anything. I mean, to societies, to companies, to organizations, to even even at the at the personal level. I mean, if you want to be resilient in this kind of uh, of uh, period of time, you cannot rely on what you learned five, ten years ago. I mean, you need to, to, to uh, try to adapt and be prepared for, uh, for the worst every, every time. As, as a person, I would say, if you want to be relevant uh, in, in, in the market, you need to, to, to adapt and, and continue to, to educate yourself. And uh, I think this is something that uh, we can see, but not all the people are prepared to, 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 to this kind of, of uh, challenge. And, and, and it's, it goes back to, to the question and the answers that we've, uh, we've, you know, we've uh, answered earlier. I mean, to have an organization, uh, agile, uh, you don't need only the leaders to be agile, you need everyone to be agile and to adapt. Yeah, the discussion reminds me another conference when I uh, was uh, participating and it was discussion with what an agilist and anti-fragilist and uh, at the end they, they come together to say, listen, making a company to be both, you need to dream like in science fiction movies. Imagine that you build a city and those city is by the sea and could be modern and serve and satisfy his uh, his uh, people who live in that in order to come and flood like people from Romania want to come to Cruz, for example. But you need to pay attention at any moment from the sea could come a giant lizard spitting fire. You need to be prepared to defend the city. <laughs> Which means two things. One is building and I don't know, the sea border must be consolidated and resist maybe to attack. And this could be anti-fragility. And you need people and or maybe a, an answer force that will fight against the lizard and will kill it. Or maybe it will make it run away. And this is agility. <laughs> so so have resistance to be hit and something that from uh, must be built in in you know, architecture of the city, in order when there is a hit, I grow. I don't know. I receive a hit from the fire of the dragon or the lizard, and there is a wall coming up. So I become stronger. Agility means when I see somebody, I send I send I don't know a plane helicopter to fight against against the lizard, and this is agility. Uh, how a company could mix this together would be a wonderful wonderful uh, mix. 
Uh, let's go back maybe to, to agility right now because uh, we have uh, 20 more minutes. And I would love to, to get down to, to some conclusion about what a company from IT and technologies and not only could do these days about uh, agility. We can discover that we are agile or not enough agile. We need plans. What could be uh, your your suggestion? And I invite uh, people who are listening to us, maybe some 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 example from their companies or the companies they saw, and some other questions for the last quarter of of, of our together. How a company could make a plan to become agile? That there is not only one answer. Uh, exactly. It's depending yeah. on the, the 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 specialty of the company. Is depending on the stakeholders. It's depending of the culture of the company, of the age of the company. It's depending on the chief of the company. It, it's depending on so many so many things. And uh, to to be agile, uh, we need to to give agile answers. And there is not only one model. There is. Uh, uh, agility is not a, a result. Agility is a meaning, is, is a way, uh, but this is not the result. And uh, no, so I, I, it's impossible to give only one answer. It's totally depending on the situation. Okay, then maybe examples instead of answers. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you said that you worked with a pharmaceutical company uh, uh, um, in the past. I, I had that uh, opportunity as well. And uh, they decided to develop agility inside the factory, not for the whole company, only inside the factory, because uh, they wanted to develop the autonomy and responsibility of the workers. And uh, it was their answer. They began here. Uh, I worked in company in another one. Uh, they began with uh, the CEO and his uh, first level of uh, direction. And uh, after that, we, we, we had, uh, we developed trainings for, for the people uh, to, 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 to the bottom. There, there are so many, so many answers. It's impossible to, to give one. Absolutely. I remember I worked with, to speak about something quite regulated, a salmon company. And uh, they have a clear demand for agility and uh, they uh, choose to, to use the project, projects, change project as a form of uh, developing agility, especially to prepare people to face different contexts. And uh, they choose on purpose projects where people uh, need to change something and they require to people to use in that area of the project on a scope of the project the new behaviors and the type of projects were three three categories one was totally inside like you say Jerome something very internal it was a supply chain uh, projects but without too much connection with, with the suppliers. They just need to get together, to coordinate, to share uh, as a maintenance program in three factories. It was a huge volume of data, but it was internal. And they made it well. In six months, economy of scales, money in no pocket, smile on the face. It was another project that was somehow on a border. They plan to uh, switch uh, to a different kind of um, uh, fuel combustible, you know, for to, to burn in a factory, and they create a strategy. Here, for example, it was a longer project. It took a year to define a strategy, simply because people weren't used to the uncertainty and taking every stone and looking down. There is an opportunity here, there is an opportunity here. And the third project was the most, the most wild, was something related to human resources. All the factory were in the middle of nowhere old factories uh, that was built and led by people who built them. And uh, it was a difficulty to bring young engineers to stay there. So it was a clash of culture between people grow in an old, old, uh, old culture from let's say 70s, 80s, very vertical to bring people 
young engineer which are millennials who want purpose uh, and so on so the more the organization as a project was turning into outside the more was difficult to to reach the desired level of answer uh, by the company perhaps an answer is to start challenging yourself i'm just uh, thinking aloud to build uh, agility organization could be decide to challenge yourself more and more to reach maybe a degree of uncertainty and discomfort would that be acceptable or not you can say not Bogdan <laughs> uh, it's it yeah it's uh, for me it's something that uh, it's, it's it's somehow mandatory you you can't have uh, an organization that it's it's prepared for uh, for that and if you're not uh, stre continuously stressed uh, the organization so i mean uh, you can you can say that you're agile but uh, you really see uh, if you're agile or or not or anti fragile in in real difficult context you're not seeing that you're agile or uh, anti-fragile in in the, in the perfect context never i mean it's it's uh, it's and, and and that's why i i think uh, we need to continue continuously stress the organization uh to to prepare ourselves to prepare the teams to prepare the our people uh, to to the um, to the world that we are living in, and and also we need to do that. I, I think with uh, with our partners, with our team. So our client needs to need need to need to be prepared, and we we need to somehow help them to be prepared for uh, for that. Uh, Jerome, uh, can uh, at least a company who consider the agile way to have some recommendation in terms of uh, scope? For example, performance, profit, or else. Any comments on that? And the only comment I have on that is that uh, uh, it's absolutely necessary to be coherent. Do, do we say that in English? Uh, well, in the during the transformation, uh, it's not because you train people to become agile. Uh, that you uh, this action is in, is sufficient is, is enough to to transform you need to transform the definition of performance you need to transform the assessment criteria you need to transform the management which which is the key the main key to transform an organization uh, transforming to agility an organization to agility means uh, having in the same time different uh, works uh, and uh, uh, it's not only a question of training it, it's really uh, organi an organization is something very complicated with many many dimensions and you need to work on the all on the, all the dim dimensions together okay. and I saw uh, 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 I, 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 I was working with companies that work only on training managers, but they didn't change, for example, the definition of performance and they didn't change the assessment criteria. Uh, it was fantastic during three months, Absolutely. maybe six, but after that they come back to the beginning. <laughs> there is a temptation of, of the fashion also in the management ideas in organization and agile could be something of fashion. Yes, that's why I said that uh, agility is not a goal, but a, a way. It's a way. It's a way. I remember. It's a journey. Part. It's a journey. A customer, uh, well, somebody from a customer team tell me, yeah, it's something like the credo from Christians, you know, agility for organization or something like that. It's not a solution. It's, 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 mostly, it's mostly a way. That's why I, I, I don't say being agile. I say acting with agility. It's quite agility. different. It's quite different. Okay. So final thoughts. We have uh, four minutes to go, and uh, somebody from the public, if have still have questions, we still have time. But some some uh, 
final idea, thoughts, reaction, recommendation for uh, people in organization of include related to the time we are living in. What could be the first thing to do if you, you would about offering them idea or a magic wand? Uh, inclusion. The, the, the IT <laughs> companies. In, in, inclusion, inclusion, it's very simple. Uh, interview of Bogdan and ask Ciprian to work with you. <laughs> okay, beside that, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Bogdan, Bogdan it's, it's a wonderful, uh, it could be a wonderful tutor with his uh, strong uh, experience. Yeah, for sure. Entrepreneur, successful entrepreneur and my entrepreneur, for sure. <laughs> thank you, Bogdan. Uh, thank you, uh, Jerome, for endorsement. But what else beside that? <laughs> I mean, there, there's no such a thing as a magic wand. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult to to give uh, to give uh, uh, an answer for all the all the questions I, and i think all the uh, other organization needs somehow first first thing is to start to ask the this, these questions okay are we i mean the, the the title of the workshop it's it's about that i mean if you're starting to understand and and try to understand the way that your organization it's uh, it's acting and and it's uh, functioning in in this uh, in this ecosystem <clears throat> nowadays. Uh, it's already a big step, I, I would say. And and all the organization, depending on the size, on the culture, uh, once they are they're asking these questions, they will find the best the best way to to cope with that. So first first thing is to 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 be uh, somehow uh, conscious about the fact that uh, we will never be uh, enough uh, agile or enough anti-fragile uh, and it's it's a it's a process i mean you 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 cannot stop uh, saying okay we we're stopping because we are now we are agile it's a process it's a continuous process and this is this is something that is very difficult for leaders, for organizations to to understand. I mean, it's 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 something that it's it's very very uh, uh, transformative. I, I would say. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, I'm so sorry. We we reached the time. The time's up. We have to go. Uh, we just uh, need to say that it was a wonderful session. It was very insightful. We missed Sinan out here, who apparently is sick, as he's, he's texting me. Uh, we invite everybody here to visit your booth, uh, Bogdan, Peter Kuklus, have a booth here at the exhibition. Also, Jerome, with your, your tool called uh, Agile Profile. And um, we look forward for a new adventure uh, about agility and fragility. And why not? A bit of luck, Bogdan? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Thank you very much. And have a Thank nice you. And may the Agile Force be with you. Bye-bye. <laughs>